welcome to Maladechna. I'm back in the place where I was about three months ago. Wow, time has flown very quickly. But unfortunately, I won't be staying here in Maladechna. I'm going to a place called Viljeka, which is about 20 kilometers northwest of here. So no time to get reacquainted with the Maladechna hottie. It's time to move on, guys, to a new adventure. Let's go, Poyakili. Здравствуйте. Один билет в Билиака, пожалуйста. Билиака, да. Welcome to Billeka, guys. I finally arrived with my one hand. How ridiculous do I look? With this but anyway since we're here let's explore this town let's see what this place has in store for us I'm in the center of Vilyeka this is a central central square and that man behind me Lenin I wonder how more how long more he'll be still up there on his pedestal Anyway, what a nice place, Vilyeka. A bit about this town, guys. The town was founded sometime around the 15th century. And in that course and period of time, it has changed hands between Russia and Poland, Lithuania, Russia again, Soviet Union, and now in Belarus. But one thing that Vilyeka does have and that is a very, very nice Catholic church right in front of me. The church of the Holy Spirit. And while I was filming today, guys, I got some really bad news from back home. One of my uncles passed away. Rather, it was, it was expected he was ill for uh, quite some time. But anyway, let's go inside, light a candle to him. He wasn't really that religious anyway, but still. Nice little story about this church here. It's built in the Gothic style and it was completed sometime around 1911. And during the Soviet times, it was actually a warehouse. And then it got converted into an exhibition center. But today, thankfully, it's been converted back into its original use. That of being a church. Unfortunately, guys, it's closed. A very nice place. All right, let's see. Let's see if it's open. This is the name of the church Church of St. Mary of Egypt. And I mean, look, it's open. One thing I like about the Orthodox churches, they're always open the whole of the day. Whereas the Catholic churches, a lot of them are closed. As soon as the Sunday services or whatever they're over, they shut their doors. It's a pity, really, because that, that is a beautiful church.
where we are right now guys is that we're at the Polish army cemetery part of the cemetery which contains the bodies of hundreds of Polish army soldiers who fought and died during the 1919-1920 war between Poland and the nascent Soviet Russia from 1920 to 1939 up to the 17th of September 1939 Wilecka was part of the second Polish Republic and in this town so in Wilecka we had the center it was the headquarters of the COP that was the border protection unit or the Corpus Okrana Progodnica in Polish and their job was to protect the borders of Poland from any Soviet incursion or bandits or thieves or robbers or criminals in which there were quite many at the time the COP had approximately three military, three infantry divisions and two cavalry divisions were stationed here all the time because this town was right on the border with the Soviet Union and on the 17th of September 1939 under the terms of the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact the Soviet Union invaded Eastern Poland now of course it's Western Belarus up to the 22nd of June 1941 and it was here two days after the German invasion Operation Barbarossa in 1941 on 24th of June the first massacre took place here when the local NKVD rounded up 500 Poles soldiers ex-members of the cop officers opened out the prisons and murdered them just the day before the Germans came and after the Germans came they began rounding up the local Jews and on the 15th and on the 30th of July 1941 two further massacres here took place which the Nazi SS Gruppen rounded up hundreds of Jews in this town and surrounding villages and massacred them right here in this town and Wilecka was under Nazi occupation until the 4th of July 1944 this place has been through quite a lot rest in peace guys I'll check this guy out here this again is a Polish tomb there he is in the local in the uh, Polish army uniform Mroszak his name Karol Karol Mroszak died in the 19th the 10th 1944 we killed in battle I mentioned earlier guys in my previous videos Belarus has been quite true a lot down through the years wars and so on but right now it's going through its own another part of its tumultuous history protests are happening throughout the country what is happening here in Belarus is not is not a color revolution it is a genuine popular train station to go back and continue my journey but I was told by a local whom I was chatting to about 10 minutes ago there is something special here in this town of Vilieka it's actually inside the electrical plant but it's closed for today but I can stick the camera in through the gates and if you see over there you will see a monument to Marsh of Joseph Pilsudski it's the only one of its kind in all of Belarus and who exactly was Marshal Joseph Pilsudski? Well, he was the president of interwar Poland, the Second Polish Republic, from 1920 to 1935. 
and in 1935 the Polish government, because Wilieka was part of the Vilna Wojciech, erected this monument at this spot in 1935. And in September 1939, when the Soviets invaded, they, dest they destroyed the monument, or what was left of it, and dumped it. And this monument here was found in 2004, and when it was found, the Polish embassy in Minsk wants to bring it back to Minsk and, and stick it in the embassy in Minsk. However, the locals here in Wilieka decided that they would keep it. And here we have it guys, the only monument or memorial in Belarus, the whole of Belarus, to Marshal Joseph Pilsudski. That's something you don't learn about every day. Well guys, that's it. Reached the end of my trip to Vilieka. It's been a nice little trip, small nice little town. Took in a bit of history as well, particularly the Polish part of this rather picturesque place. I didn't actually manage to visit the lake. Unfortunately, just ran out of time going to different places, talking about different places. But yeah, if you're looking for a day trip outside of Minsk, this is the place to come. So guys, on that, like the bid to every one of you, thus Vidania. And Slonga Fall. Signing off. <laughs>